eight time in citizens communication. You have to use your three minutes uh, by yourself. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Kathleen Flatt. I have been a resident of Austin for over 40 years. Let's establish some common ground. We're all aware of a recent council official who was arrested for DWI. That official, within a few days of their arrest, took ownership and responsibility for their actions and pled guilty and served time and paid fines and is going through the steps of recovery to put their life back in order. Had that event happened 20 years ago, it might have played out differently. That official would have been pulled over, and once the officer realized who they were, most likely the officer would have secured the car and driven that official home as a professional courtesy. If I lay, may, let me see by a show of hands for the council members and the audience if anyone believes that is how the recent arrest should have been handled today. Thank you. Just a few weeks ago, an Austin police officer was put on indefinite suspension. The reason for his dismissal was because he lied in order to get a free movie ticket. He could no longer be credible witness for the prosecution. Again, may I see a show of hands if anyone thinks that we should retain employees whose job it is to testify in a court of law, which through careful documentation, it can be determined that they lie in an official capacity. Thank you. I think it's safe to say that we all agree that the days of professional courtesies when public officials break the law are over and are no longer tolerated by the public, and that we as a society cannot and should not tolerate employees who lie for personal gain or lie in an official capacity to imply things that not in fact in order to misdirect an investigation. It has become necessary for me to publicly stand before you and place in the city's records that I am here as a whistleblower to report that in this public forum that employees of the Code Compliance Department continue to openly violate not only their own department policies, but state federal law. Whistleblower is the necessary term because I have and continue to experience retaliation and veiled threats by city employees for trying to bring to light documented cases of abuse of authority and tampering with government records by Code Compliance employees. There is not enough time in this forum to present many facts, and it is not opinion but fact that I offer. I started off a few years ago in our own personal time educating about code compliance department. I have obtained through open records not only their policy manual, but all their training material used to educate their employees. It is within their own training material where lies the references of accountability and to the laws to which investigators for the city are being held accountable for. Make no mistake that these pseudo-law enforcement officers are out there documenting homes and businesses using photos and case notes, creating reports, and these same employees testify in a court of law as to their actions. Over the last few years, I myself have documented and turned in Next speaker is uh, Dale Flatt, Code Compliance in Austin Cemeteries. To be continued. <clears throat> to be continued, sir, yes. Uh, over the past few years, I myself have documented and turned in violations of the city code on things like empty lots that are overgrown and used as dump sites, abandoned tire shops, roadside dumping, and yes, City of Austin property, all in an effort to objectively see how this division handles their cases. I keep before and after photos of each location I have turned in, as well as copies of investigative case logs by city inspectors for each address. These, along with permit records and other documents provide me, provided to me by the city through open records requests, paint a clear picture. It is your own documents, not my opinion, that clearly shows that state laws are being broken, that Austin properties in violation of city codes are given a professional courtesy, and in many cases, no action is taken and these cases are simply closed. This selective approach should not be tolerated. This places city employees that work in these spaces in danger, as well as endangering the public that visit these spaces when we allow work to be done without permits and inspections. I have reported my concerns to staff and even Austin Police Department with no results. What was to be a one-on-one -on -one meeting yesterday with Assistant City Manager Mike McDonald to discuss my concerns 
happened to be not only Carl Smart, Director of Code Compliance, but the lead supervisor to a city department for which I work for. We will call him Harry. When I asked Harry, why are you here, he said that Chief McDonald asked him to attend. Harry played the part of secretary and took notes on a laptop, and Chief McDonald made it very clear that it was his opinion that all I had was opinion, that he was a professional law enforcement officer and I did not have the training or all of the facts. It became very clear that Mr. McDonald was not there to listen to a citizen reporting crimes. This was an ambush with the only possible reason for Harry to be there was to intimidate me and create a veiled threat to my employment if I were to bring facts to light. To Chief McDonald, I have to publicly state, sir, it did not work. City policy as well as state and federal law is very clear. If an employee suspects fraud or illegal acts by others, they are to report it to their employer and that retaliation for reporting such acts will not be tolerated. So I am here at the top rung of the ladder of city government speaking to you, the city council. It is clear that the city will not police itself, so it's time to expand the public visibility of these cases. Some of our research can be found at joefairview.com. This site needs updating and they are working on it. Soon, much more content will be added. You can look us up on YouTube, look for stories about Austin Code Compliance. We actually have uh, Joe Fairview on Facebook. Now I ask you, what is my next step? Who among you will sit down with me and look at the facts? Anybody? Is there any council member that will sit down and look? Nobody raised their hand. Flat. Yes, sir. Council member Spellman. It's irregular for you to ask us questions. I think it's probably why nobody responded to, to your question, but I'll respond now just to, because you need a response. Yes, sir. If you send me something in writing, I'll happily take a look at it, but I won't commit to a meeting until I see something in writing, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, council members. Ben Einan. Ben Einan. City of Austin Investment and Workforce. You're welcome to speak for three minutes. Good afternoon. My name is Ben Einan, and I'm a senior director of engineering at uh, Samsung Austin Semiconductor, and I'm also a board member at Capital Idea. So I first want to take this opportunity to thank you for what you created with the initial Samsung investment. And I'm also very proud of uh, one of the Capital Idea Pilot Project graduates from that time, John Dell. He's now part of my highly skilled technical team at Samsung. Back in 1998, John only had a GED, but with special classes in math conducted by leaders from Austin Interfaith at San Jose Church, he was able to get a higher paying job as an equipment operator at Photronics Incorporated where advanced technology skills were required. Now with his two-year degree from ACC, he has moved to Samsung and has become a key member of my team responsible for maintaining master optical patterns we use to make the microchips that are more than likely in the, the cell phones and tablets of everybody here in this room. Uh, John, and later you'll hear from uh, one of our graduates, Michelle, and by the way, these are all of the, uh, the uh, former students, uh, staff members, and uh, board members of uh, Capital Idea standing. Uh, you'll hear from Michelle in a, in a second and her son, who are powerful examples of the potential of ordinary Austin citizens to contribute to world-class industries through targeted education supported by Capital Idea. But John, in my case with John, he could not take this path without having his two-year education first if he were to try to do this today in 2013. Entry-level education requirements in all good-paying industries have risen to the, to the uh, uh, associate's degree level, and they keep going up. So I thank you for your support of Capital Idea and urge you to continue making workforce development investments in Austin citizens. It's now more important than ever. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Michelle Monreal. I don't know if I said that correctly or not. Michelle Monreal, and I am one of more than a thousand individuals who have entered the skilled career field thanks to Capital Idea and you. 
I wanted to express my thanks for the ongoing investment the City of Austin has made over the last 15 years to keep this enormously beneficial program available to low-income adults. When I started with Capital Idea in 1999, I was struggling to raise my son and support myself on $8.50 an hour. With no benefits, I was dependent on Section 8 housing. Like many poor adults, I have a strong desire to, pro to provide more for my child and was willing to work as hard as I need to to better our circumstances. Capital Idea took that desire, laid out the path that I would need to, make, to meet my goals and helped me address every barrier in my way. Since my graduation in 2003, I have received numerous accommodations for the work that I do and have nearly tripled my income. I am, a now, I am now a lead surgical tech for St. David's Hospital for more than 13 years. Thank you for breaking many cycles that have held on to my family for generations. And because of you, that cycle has now been broken. I'm going to introduce my son, Gabriel Perez, who is the third year in Tech State University. Hello, my name is Gabriel, and as my mother said, I'm a student at Texas State. I'm working towards my bachelor's in healthcare administration. I wanted to thank you all for your investment in my mother's education and briefly share with you the impact it's had on me. My mother's decision to go to, to, go to college set a new standard for me that wasn't there before. As a child witnessing her success and seeing our circumstances change, I realized how important education can be. There was no question that I would go to college and I knew my mom would show me how to get there. When I was confused about career choices, my mom was the resource I would go to. Rather than just picking a major and hoping there would be an opportunity on the other side, she helped me research and envision a long-term career goal, then work backwards to lay out my path to get there. Your investment not only gave her the opportunity for self-sufficiency in a career, it gave me an excellent example to follow and established a respect for education that I'll pass down to my children someday. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriel. You've brought several people to tears with the, your story, including other. Thank you very much. Uh, Adele.